backs against the wall, feathers ruffled, a must-win situation. Oregon softball had quite the test in front of them Friday night in front of a sellout crowd at Jane Sanders Stadium. In the biggest test of their, the Ducks are in a winner go home situation down 0 to 1 in a best of three series to the number 16 Kentucky Wildcats in NCAA Super Regionals. After giving up nine runs on ten hits in last night's loss, many wondered how and if the Ducks would bounce back because Oregon had not been put in a situation like this all long. The Ducks haven't given up that many runs since playing at the Arizona Wildcats in April 2017. It was a different story tonight. Oregon came in focused, fired up, feeling good, and defeated the Wildcats 6-1. Just a much better overall performance, especially defensively. We made some big plays, said Oregon coach Mike White. You could tell we were fighting for our lives. That's what we had to do with our backs up against the wall. I was really proud of our team, hoping tomorrow we can do the same thing. It was there an IDIDNT want it to be, said senior infielder Jenna Lilly on dropping the first game versus Kentucky. You have to acknowledge that that's the reality of it and what we're playing for to keep power going. So definitely the thought was there but do everything we can to not let that happen. Freshman sensation and hometown kid Lauren Burke has not faced a bit in her first postseason play as a collegiate player. Burke, from Marist High School here in Eugene, Oregon, has batted five for six with seven RBIs and two homers this postseason. But this is not over quite yet. One down, one to go. Oregon softball must have back-to-back -back wins over the Wildcats to advance to the College World Series. One more game tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., and Jane Sanders Stadium. Will the same team that came in focused in Game 2 repeat itself in Game 3 or will the momentum swing back to Kentucky's side as it did in Game 1? Softball fans are in for a real treat tomorrow night with a trip to Nationals on the line. Four errors. Nine runs given up. Ten hits allowed. A rather uncharacteristic night for the number one seeded Oregon Ducks in Round 1 of the NCAA Super Regionals. The number 16 Kentucky Wildcats, coming off unruling all three of their opponents last weekend, the Bats were hot and junior pack 12 pitcher of the year Megan Kleist was tested early and often. Kleist did not seem like her usual self, and besides striking out the first Kentucky batter, had a rough first inning giving up a three-run homer to Will Katz ace hitter Abby Cheek. The Ducks' offense did manage to put up six runs on the night, but the defense did not hold giving up four errors on bad throws. We know our backs are up against the wall right now, said coach Mike White following the game. It makes it pretty simple, we have to come out and win otherwise our is done. I thought our team fought hard, we never gave up, we battled until the last out, unfortunately at DIDNT workout today. Hopey tomorrow it can be a different story. Oregon will face a do-or-die situation tomorrow in this best-of-three series with the Wildcats already down 0-1. to Kentucky, I give them a lot of credit, they came in here and they came to play. So like coach says, pretty simple, you win or you don't, said senior catcher Gwen Svekas. Oregon must flush this game and move on. Focus on the task at hand, do all the little things right, and flat-out win tomorrow. With their backs against the wall, how will this team respond now? It's what we do tomorrow and the next day that matter the most, said White. How are we going to bounce back? Sure we had a bad game, but if we want to be the national champions and be the number one team in the country, we need to be able to come back from this. Plenty of teams have done it before. We need to be fired up and come out and play a better game. The number one overall seeded Oregon Ducks are built on a foundation of experience. Players like seniors Gwen Svekas, Jenna Lilly, and Lauren Lindvall who have been in the national tournament before. Postseason success relies on experience such as this. But it doesn't stop there for the Ducks. Coach Mike White and his staff have made quiet the effort in terms of recruiting and can be seen with the electric underclassmen on this Oregon roster. For starters, first baseman Mia Camuso was second on the team last year with 47 RBIs. Camuso is just a sophomore. Outfielder Shannon Rhodes made her name known last with her powerful hitting, also just a sophomore. Haley Cruz finds herself sitting higher in the batting order this year in postseason play, combined with her speed, rounds out this impressive sophomore class, two freshmen in particular really jump off the roster. Local kid Lauren Burke out of Marist High School, Eugene, Oregon, hit a two-run homer in the Ducks' first game versus U Albany to boost Oregon into round two of the NCAA Eugene Regionals.
Backing up senior Svekas behind the plate is freshman Mary Iacopo, who looks as confident as ever behind the plate, has a deadly arm, and a threat at bat as well. Speaking on the freshman and sophomore class, Coach White said, They are putting a lot of pressure on the upperclassmen. We are lodding a great senior class and that next class has to be ready to go. That's what we try to do, to have depth. This roster has potential all around, but the most solid group of all has to be on the mound. Pick your poison between Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year junior Megan Kleist and sophomore stud Miranda Alish, both with eras under one. On top of that, sophomore Maggie Ballant proved last as just a freshman that she can make quiet the impact as well. Alish and Kleist allowed zero runs over the course of regionals weekend. The Oregon Ducks await the winner of the Lexington region to be played next weekend in Super Regionals. Chicago Troy Browns only at the University of Oregon didnt go as he planned. Not only did the team not make the NCAA tournament, the heralded wing was only good, and not great, on the court. Even so, after averaging 11.3, 6.2 rebounds and 3.2 assists for the Ducks, Brown said he saw enough in himself to declare for the NBA draft. I would say it was okay, he said of his freshman and Eugene. It wasnt the best year, or the year I wanted. Every kid dreams of going to college and being the star player, but we all go through our ups and downs, and it's one of those things I learned from, and I feel I matured from. He said he feels the up-and-down tempo of the NBA will better suit his offensive game and complement his defensive versatility. NBA scouts seem to agree as Brown is projected to be a mid-to-late first-round selection. I can do everything on the court, Brown said. I feel like I can score the ball really well, but at Oregon that WASNT my role. We had a lot of guys who could put the ball in the hoop. I was more of a glue guy, and I was okay with that. I was fine just showing my versatility and doing the hard stuff, rebounding, guarding the best player, diving for loose balls and stuff like that. The six foot seven Brown appears to be the type of hybrid player that is becoming valued in today's NBA game, long, athletic and able to guard several positions. The knock on his game, his outside shooting, has been a point of emphasis in his pre-draft workouts. The more repetitions, the better, Brown said. He said he is embracing the undefined nature of what position he will play in the NBA, noting that the league is trending more toward positionless basketball. I feel like coming out of college everybody sees me as a small forward, but I can still make my way up to whatever position my coach needs me to do to get the W, Brown said. That's what I'm willing to do. By Tim Carney there were nine players drafted from the University of Washington, the University of Oregon and Washington State University in this NFL draft. I have picked four of them that I think will play well in their first year. Vita Vea, DT Washington Tampa Bay Books, first round 12th pick Vea is an absolute monster on the defensive line. His strength is hard to match and he will have some success with his bull rush as a pro as a rookie. Vea really shows his special ability by how quick he is, he is a smooth athlete even at more than 330 pounds. I believe his first step will still be enough to gain leverage against other linemen in the NFL and I think he could get five or six sacks his year. He was a first-team Pac-12 player this year, and won two more Pac-12 defensive linemen awards as well. The books believe in his playmaking ability too, they proved how highly they thought of him by picking him 12th overall. There is no chance for a defensive lineman to go that early unless he can get to the quarterback. Royce Freeman, RB Oregon Denver Broncos, third round seventh pick the Broncos grabbed one of the most dynamic and consistent playmakers at the running back position in the third round with Freeman. His nickname of Rolls Royce shows how smooth he can look as he is making plays with the ball in his hands. Did I mention he has more rushing two counts in his career than anyone else in Pac-12 history, and is in the top 10 all-time rushes in the NCAA? CJ Anderson is no longer the lead running back in Denver, so the door is open for Freeman to snag the starting spot over the inconsistent Devon Ty Booker. Cole Madison, OG Washington State Green Bay Packers, fifth round first pick Madison's number one trait is his athleticism, he moves better than most people his size and even people smaller than him. The Packers have Aaron Rodgers running the show so the offensive line benefits from high mobility and quick release, this could help Madison make an impact if given the chance early on. Things are unsettled on the right side of Green Bay's O-line and Madison could be a guy that impresses in training camp and gets the starting gig.
Terrell Cosby, Algorigan Detroit Lions, 5th round 16th pick Cosby was a first-team Pac-12 player this past and according to Pro Football Focus did not allow a single sack a quarterback hit in 2017. Many people see his run blocking as his strength and he is very good at it but pass blocking will get to him a job in the NFL. The Lions have not had a great O-line in a long time and this is another attempt to bolster it by finding the last piece. I can't believe Crosby was still on the board in the middle of the fifth round, so he was a bit of a steal in my book. I think he could play tackle a guard for them as a fill-in guy this year. Oregon softball may just have the formula for a national championship and it starts on the mound, 14 strikeouts, 77 pitches with 61 strikes in seven innings, zero runs. Just a glimpse into the life of Oregon Ducks sophomore pitcher Miranda Elish in Game 1 of the NCAA Eugene Regional vs. Albany. Elish took command of the game right away going 3 up, 3 down in the first inning leading the Ducks to a 4-0 victory over the Great Danes. But this is nothing new. Elish has been doing this all along. The Ducks head into the postseason as the number one overall seed behind the stellar 1-2 punch on the mound of Elish and Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year, junior Megan Kleist. The consistency of Alicia and Klesert have propelled the Ducks to a Pac-12 Conference Championship in an already gruesome conference with constant top-10 national caliber teams. Both Kleist and Alicia were also selected this to the first team All-Pac-12. Oregon finished with a 47-7 overall record, a 21-3 conference record, and an overall number one seed in the USA Today poll, heading into the NCAA post, when deciding who would get the starting nod versus U Albany, coach Mike White said, we've got two number ones out there, it could have gone either way. Having not one, but two pitchers in your arsenal combined with the power off the bats for Oregon softball, could call for a deep tourney run, Eugene, Oregon. University of Oregon head coach Mario Cristobal announced title enhancements for three members of his coaching staff on Thursday. Offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach Marcus Arroyo has added assistant head coach to his duties. Safeties coach Keith Hayward has added co-defensive coordinator duties to his role entering the 2018. In addition to being the associate head coach, defensive line coach Joe Salavia will now also serve as co-defensive coordinator, run game coordinator for the defense. The duo will work alongside defensive coordinator Jim Levitt, who handles the play calling. I'm very happy to announce these promotions for Marcus, Keith and Joe, said Cristobal. These guys have played a critical role in the advancement of the program, helping us establish an identity and culture. I have a ton of belief in them as teachers and coaches in the game of football and in life. Iroyo joined the Ducks in February of 2017 as co-offensive coordinator while coaching the quarterbacks and tight ends. He was promoted to offensive coordinator this past December. In his first with the Ducks, the Oregon tied for the Pac-12 lead with seven games of 40-plus points. Oregon is the fifth stop for Arroyo as a play caller, having already done so with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Southern Mississippi, Wyoming and San Jose State. Veterans of the Pac-12 Conference as both coaches and players, Salavia and Hayward were part of Levitt's defensive staff in 2017 that provided an immediate improvement over the previous year. The Oregon defense made major jumps in nearly every statistical category, highlighted by total defense from 115th to 46th. Entering his second leading Oregon safeties room, Hayward has coached defensive backs at four different Pac-12 schools and was an all-Pac-10 cornerback at Oregon State. Prior to Oregon, he was the secondary coach at Louisville in 2016. An all-Pac-10 defensive lineman at Arizona before playing in the NFL for eights, Salavia spent fives at Washington State prior to arriving in Eugene. While at Washington State, he served as the defensive line coach all five years and was the assistant head coach the final two. Welcome to the flock. It was just last week that former Wake Forest star Tabari Hines announced his intentions to leave the Demon Deacons and take his talents to Eugene. God gave the task to a purposeful child double exclamation mark take the pack Goduck stuck fast and loud green heart pick dot twitter dot com slash 8 kpw 21 inc Tabari Hines leopard checkered flag at Tabari Hines April 30th 2018 the 510 175 pounds wide receiver instantly helps bring some much needed talent and depth to Oregon's receiving core Junior Dylan Mitchell had a productive 2017 for the Ducks, and hopes to build on that in 2018, but the rest of the group is young and unproven. Hines looks to change that. 
As a junior last at Wake Forest, Hines led the team with 53 receptions, and was third on the team with 683 receiving yards and seven scores. To put that in perspective, Mitchell was the leader in two of those categories for Oregon last, hauling in 42 receptions for 517 yards, while tight end Jacob Breland led the team with five two counts. Hines would be number one in all three. There is little doubt that Hines will make a difference on the field, but enough about that. Let's get to know a little bit more about the newest duck. Hines had narrowed his transfer options to Oregon, USC, and Texas before ultimately deciding on UO, says players and the coaches really helped set Oregon apart. Thanks to all the jerseys, he says he actually watched a lot of Oregon football as a kid. How does he describe his new quarterback, Justin Herbert simply, H-E-S the real deal? Hines says he doesn't know how to fish but wants to learn how. This is the Pacific Northwest. It might be kind of hard to find someone to teach him, wink the emoji that best describes him he says it's the cool guy with the glasses. Want to learn even more about the newest duck? Be sure to tune in to The Bridge tonight at 6pm for the interview with Serena Winters and B.R.I. Amaranthus. And since B.R.I. does call him a hashtag king, it would serve you well to follow Heinz on Twitter at Tobari Heens and Instagram at Tobari Heens 1. With the 153rd pick in the NFL draft, the Detroit Lions selected offensive lineman Terrell Crosby out of the University of Oregon. Lions draft at Oregon football T. Terrell Crosby with the 153rd overall pick of the 2018 NFL draft pick. Twitter.com slash using peacebeg. Detroit Lions at Lions April 28, 2018. Crosby was a first team All State selection in Nevada prior to heading to Eugene, and came to Oregon with high expectations. He didnt start his career as a starter, but injuries on the line thrust him into the spotlight. Crosby seized the opportunity presented to him, starting nine games at tackle and never letting go of the starting job. Injuries cut his 2016 short, forcing to miss all but three games, and gave him the juice to come back better than ever for his senior. He did just that. Crosby started all 13 games in his final in Eugene, winning the Morris Trophy as the Pac-12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. He also earned numerous honors, including First Team All Pac-12, College Madness, Third Team All America, SB Nation and College Football New Honorable Mention All America, and Pro Football Focus First Team All Pac-12. If you need any more evidence of how good he is, just looks at the career stats of the man he opened up running holes for. Royce Freeman Crosby has all the tools for a long, lucrative NFL career. With the 71st pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos selected running back Royce Freeman out of the University of Oregon. Freeman is now the highest Oregon running back drafted since La Michael James was selected 61st overall back in 2012. Royce Freeman had a tremendous career at Oregon and is our third-round pick. He is a big, physical runner who will fit in well in our backfield. Pick.twitter.com slash CQQ11CDVTL John Elway at John Elway April 28, 2018 Freeman was one of the best running backs in Oregon history. He jumped on the scene as a freshman and rushed for 1,365 yards and 18 two counts, earning a spot on the freshman All-American team. He doubled down his sophomore year, rushing for 1,836 yards and 17 two counts, earning first-team All-Pac-12 honors. The Ducks expected big things from him in his junior year, but the injury bug limited him to just 945 yards. At that point in his career many people expected Freeman would declare for the draft, but he surprised everyone by coming back for his senior. In his final in Eugene, Freeman rushed for 1,475 yards and 16 scores. When it was all said and done, he passed La Michael James to claim Oregon's career rushing yards record 5,621 and career two counts record 60. Freeman put up some good numbers at the combine, running a 4.5440, throwing up 17 reps in the bench press, and showing off a 34-inch vertical leap. Now it is time to see what Freeman will do in Denver at the next level. With a 71 overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the at Broncos select RB Royce Freeman at Rolls underscore Royce 21, TV, NFLN, Fox, ESPN pick.twitter.com slash Zoref30Lu.